milkshake thing Did is you kind literally of literally copy taste. and paste. <clears throat> you I did, mean, you did. Which studio did, did what? what? Mainly known for Eric is that you literally just copy and pasted it. I mean, <laughs> this it's guy. It's true. I mean, yes, but like you lifted the from literally lifted it from like control C, control V. What are we? Freaking Illuminati? <laughs> you did say it verbatim, word for word. Bro, watch out. H Bomber guy is going to be making an exposed video on us. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. I'm your host, Alex, but you can call me Senpai. And joining me tonight, I have our czar of source material, John. I was really hoping to get you with the head bob but i guess it's like you've seen it too many times it doesn't interest no i had it anymore i had i had the uh the intro script covering up your face ah oh. <laughs> i've learned you just learned. keep it covered up <laughs> can't make you mess up the intro as long as you don't see me <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh, the two of us have uh gotten together tonight because we're doing a studio retrospective we haven't done one of these in a while and um, with the 25th anniversary of Studio Bones happening this year, I thought this would be a good opportunity for us to do an actual studio retrospective for Studio Bones, a, uh, a studio that's had its hands in quite a lot of anime that I think both John and I have watched over the years, uh, yeah, for better um, or for worse. <laughs> it's, it's definitely had a lot of series that I didn't know was Studio Bones, like, we always talk about like, oh yeah, it's Studio Bones, Studio Bones, and I'm like, yeah, sure, I've heard of Studio Bones as but a what studio. What does that mean? But what, yeah, because you know, I if you ask me, hey, what does Studio Bones make? I'm mm -hmm. I literally could not answer and tell you other than like, oh, they made Metallic Rouge, I know that. Yeah, and, like, because we're watching I, it right I, now. I, yeah, today I learned that uh, they're most known for MHA, and I'm like, wow, I didn't know that. I don't watch MHA. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But yeah, uh, so before we actually do get into it, I do want to say, uh, for those of you who are watching, um, do consider giving us a like and subscribe if you like what you see and want to see more. Also, check down below where you can find links to Anime Club After Dark everywhere we do stuff. Um, but uh, with that, let's kind of get into it. So uh, like a lot of our studio retrospectives, I'm going to start with a little bit of background and history on uh, Studio Bones. So uh, Studio Bones was founded by a number of staff that left the studio known as Sunrise uh, back in the late 90s. In fact, around 1998, October of 1998 to be specific, um, was originally founded by Masahiko Minami, uh, Hiroshi Osaka, and uh, Toshihiro Kawamoto. Um, from what I can tell... This split seems to have been very amicable because their very first um, stuff that they worked on was co-productions with Sunrise. <laughs> um, so I'm wondering if it was sort of a situation like what happened with Studio Wit breaking off of uh, Production IG to go kind of do their own thing and make Attack on Titan. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> um yeah, because I remember we're going through the list of like, all right, what did they make originally? And it's like, oh, they they're from sunrise and they they worked with sunrise to make other things like oh yeah so is it that like at the very least it was an amicable split up because it you know it's not like an old was it old lm uh the, oh the people that uh left to go make bug films yeah, yeah that was olm okay yeah it wasn't like a bug films olm situation where they're like you know forget this company we're out we're gonna go make our own studio <laughs> The blackjack hookers, <laughs> but with blackjack and hookers. zombies, <laughs> and zombies. Uh -oh. Um, the studio's first uh, TV production was a 26 episode anime that was an anime original, um, called Hiwa War Chronicles, which is an anime I've never seen. Yeah, I've never heard of it, and you know, at the beginning, I was like, I wonder if when they split off did they just get scraps from sunrise or something but it's like nope a lot of their first works were just original works like oh yeah well what the heck <laughs> yeah um so i really just wonder if this was a bunch of people that just wanted to go off and do their own thing um kind of like yeah I'll trigger kind of just wanted to go do their own thing so they all left gynax although that was not very amicable 
No, not in uh, the slightest. <laughs> um, but no, uh, so and that aired from October 2000 to May of 2001. Um, the first two anime films that they worked on uh, were both uh, co-productions with uh, Studio Sunrise, um, and they were developed around the same time. Like They were developed pretty much simultaneously, that being the movie um, Escaflown and the Cowboy Bebop movie, Knocking on Heaven's Door. Um, obviously, Cowboy Bebop, that was a sort of a work that they did with uh, Shinichiro Watanabe, who both directed and I believe co-wrote uh, Cowboy Bebop, the series. Um, he did not write the movie, though. He only directed it. Um, both of those are actually pretty damn good movies, though. Um, and that, like I said, those were uh, co-productions. They came out in 2000 and 2001, respectively. Um, also, the Cowboy Bebop movie is great. You should definitely watch it, especially if you're a fan of Cowboy Bebop. I don't know where you can actually watch it these days because I don't think it's streaming anywhere. Um, <laughs> R.I.P. That's Although, no, shame. wait. I think last year Netflix picked it up. I think. Maybe. Don't Since quote they, me on that. I mean... It would make sense. Maybe it was part of the brand deal. We're like, hey, we're going to make Maybe. the uh, the Netflix adaptation, so please give us have- – that was the actual reason they made the live action. It was just, just to, to get, get their the, hands. the license. <laughs> For knocking on heaven's door, yeah. <laughs> but thinking. Imagine, bro. Uh, so a lot like Studio Sunrise and a lot like uh, how a lot of anime studios are structured today, uh, Bones is divided into many, many smaller sub-studios, each that focus on their own um, anime projects. Um, this was not necessarily the case for a lot of studios back in the day. It is now. There's a lot of studios, especially the bigger studios, that have like five, six, seven different sub studios that work under them. Yeah, um, like um, with A1 Pictures, for example. Mm-hmm. That's that's I believe it's owned by Aniplex. It's part of yes. Aniplex. Um, A1 has like a bunch of sub studios inside of A1. Like yeah. when you see A1 Pictures, it could either be. The guys who are working on, I believe they're working on solo leveling. Is that what they're doing right now? Is that A1? Is that A1? I, mm, you know what? I, I'd have to double check on that. No, that might. I would too. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's A1. Hold on. Give me a second. Okay. Just... Jamie, look that up. Jamie, look that up. <laughs> all right. Uh, Don't watch it on Crunchyroll. Don't care about that. Solo leveling. <laughs> A1 pictures, baby. I was right. Okay. Because I remember, I I vaguely remember seeing the, um, like, hey, the studio's going to be A1. And I was like, which A1? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I know that there's A1 pictures that do, like, amazing things. And then there's A1 pictures that do really shitty things. <laughs> yes. So Much like JC Staff. <laughs> which I believe is also co-owned by A1 pictures. So it all comes back around. It, it all comes. Well, like, A1 is like, okay, where there's, uh, there's Anohana. Okay. The yeah, A one is great. Anohana. Great. Uh Idol Master, uh Space Brothers, Sword Art Online. That's A one. Not so great. <laughs> Listen, it no, the animation is fire, bro. The story sucks, okay. but the animation is I can't peak. blame the I can't blame the anime studio for how shitty the story is, I guess. Yeah, but, but you know, they did Orishura, Vivid Operation, uh Magi, like so point is a1 has done a lot of studio uh, have done a lot of works where it's like some of them are super high quality an amazing like vivid operation is freaking a terrible anime however like, <laughs> it looks the, good. the art is amazing it, it looks amazing just yeah. don't think too hard about the fact that the girls are probably like 15 i think <laughs> in vivid just, operation don't, don't, we'll just don't we'll think. ignore it. it's a maho shoujo show it's fine it's 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 <laughs> like it's like gushing over magical girls we don't uh, we don't want to think about the fact that these girls are 14 years old it's it's fine it's a cartoon but it's, point it's is just for Studio Bones, I remember when you were like, hey, we should do a studio retrospective because we we're talking about it because of Metallic Rouge. It's like, oh, yeah, it's their 25th anniversary. We should probably do one. And I, like, I could not tell you what Studio Bones has worked on. Literally in the pre-roll, I'm just going through the list of like, oh, this is what they've worked on. I'm like, oh, I never knew that. Oh, what? I, oh, like, they did I, Kekai Sensen? Yeah. I, well, I didn't know that. I love <laughs> Kekai Sensen. They did season one and two. I love Darker Than Black. They did season one and two. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. They they did yeah. Full Metal Alchemist. Again, did not know and that. And Brotherhood. <laughs> like, wow. Because, you know, a lot of... A lot of studios have a distinct art style. They have a distinct uh, animation style or something. You know, some something like Trigger or Kill Annie, I can recognize. You know, something like yeah. 8-Bit or Madhouse, I can recognize. Like, this is 8-Bit. This is Madhouse. Kind of like 
kind of similar. But it, it's easy to see those and be like, yeah, I know those. Other than um, mm -hmm. for Trigger, I, I don't think Gridman seems like Trigger. The action scenes definitely are Trigger, but like yeah. the, the art style and everything. And the that's... character designs are a little less Trigger. Yeah, but and then uh, and then Dungeon Meshi. Um, I don't remember what the English title is. It's something dumb. Delicious in Dungeon. Delicious in Dungeon. Stupid title. Dungeon yes. Meshi. Uh, yeah, like that does not scream trigger to me at all. Like, I, if you told me that was trigger, I'd be like, "You're lying, Cap." Like, yeah. no way. But you are you are right that most studios have like this style or this quality to them that you don't have to know anything about the anime itself. You look at it and say, like, "Okay, this studio made this." Yeah, like it's so easy to identify a studio like Kill Annie. It's like they've got big old moe blob bug eyes and it's like baby making hips. Yeah, like this is this is Kill Annie. This is peak yeah. Kill Annie. You know, like Violet Evergarden is, it doesn't even have like the Moe Blob. No, but, but I you can tell, tell it's, it's KyoAni. But I can tell it's KyoAni. Like the way also KyoAni use... goes hard with their background art too. They do. They go. It's beautiful. I love yeah. KyoAni stuff. Uh, and it's also the same for um, like Clamp. Like you, or um, is it, Noodle it's... Arms. <laughs> yeah, like they have a specific design. It's like the freaking thin and tall like kind of designs. Like when I remember when. Clamp did the uh one of the openings for Bleach where I'm like this is Clamp <laughs> like yeah. all this art style this stuff I'm like this is Clamp <laughs> this wasn't this wasn't Kubo Tite this was Clamp <laughs> or you look at the character designs in um, Code Geass those are Clamp yeah this is Clamp <laughs> that's classic yeah. Clamp Subasa Chronicles yeah. that's Clamp <laughs> or in High School Host Club that's Clamp <laughs> yeah that's, that's Clamp character designs speaking of Oran High School Host Club that was Studio Bones by the way <laughs> that yeah. <laughs> Like, it was clamp I, character designs, but it was Studio Bones. They production. they are so proficient at taking like when they do original work, it just looks like anime. Like I can't tell yeah. that it's Studio Bones, but when they adapt anything based on a, a source material, they make it look it, like the source material. It looks exactly like the source material. I'm like, these guys are really talented. Like at at just making sure you don't know it's actually them. <laughs> yeah, which I don't know if that's a good quality for an anime studio to have or not. I mean, you know. I don't necessarily think that it is a selling point to be like, oh, that's that's trigger, all right, you yeah. know, because I I've had my ups and downs with trigger, but I, I definitely do see the point of like if you like like Kyo Annie, like anything Kyo Annie touches, I have I've literally seen every single Kyo Annie show. Me too, <laughs> and not on purpose too, just because I'm just attracted to the Kyo Annie art style and Moe Blob shit, so. That's just like I like this art style. I like their art style, and I have seen every single piece of Kyoani work. For mm -hmm. Bones, I've seen actually. I, I was very surprised at how many um, of the shows I've seen. Like I didn't know they did Wolf's Reign. That's an anime original as well, by the way. Like, well, that's yeah. crazy. I didn't know that. Uh, Eureka Seven didn't know that. I loved Eureka Seven. They did Soul yeah. Eater. I, bro, what? <laughs> how would I not know that? That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I said before, um, <clears throat> Studio Bones is divided into five different sub studios. They're labeled A through E, um, and so I'll just give a little bit of a rundown on what each of these studios have been known for over the years. Um, so you have Studio A. It's led by producer Naoki Amano. Um, it's mainly known for anime like uh, Gothic, Wolf's Reign, Angelic Lair, Noragami. <laughs> Uh, Carol and Tuesday. If uh, if you haven't seen Carol and Tuesday, I highly recommend it. Um, but it's it's got anime like that. You have Studio B. Uh, it's known almost exclusively for uh, Erica Seven, Rasafon, Space Dandy, and Mob Psycho One Hundred. Um, I, get, another, I didn't another... know they did Mob Psycho. Like what? That's Studio Bones. What? Yeah. That's crazy. Again, but it, but again, like it's one of those things where they really adapted the art style of the source material very well. Yeah, and it's um, the even the um, animations and stuff like for the action scenes. Like, mm -hmm. there's no because you know like for Trigger, whenever Trigger does an action scene, I'm like, that's so Trigger, dude. Yeah, like the way that they do the crumbling and the way that they frame shots and stuff, that is so Trigger. Cannot the cartoonish that ways that characters fall down. Yeah, the over exaggeration and like yeah. the freaking facial expressions, like everything about Trigger action sequences, scream Trigger to me. But I, I could not tell you that was Bones based on anything. Like, this is – it's so hard for me to recognize Bones in general just because they're so good at just making anime. Yeah. Um, you have Studio C um, led by producer Yoshihiro Oyabu. Um, 
this is probably the most prolific studio that uh, or sub studio that Studio Bones has. Um, it's known for Full Metal Alchemist, Darker Than Black, Soul Eater, or on High School Host Club. Um, and currently, it is ha- from the from the very beginning, it has been the studio exclusively working on uh, My Hero Academia from the first season to now. Um, so they that's kind of become what they only do now, I believe. I mean, I think they do have a couple of things here and there that they also have their hands in, but they pretty much exclusively do MHA now. Yeah, um, I, it looks like they've been working on MHA since ever since season one. They've only worked on MHA. Yeah. They haven't helped out well on anything else. Um, Which makes sense. Studio... I mean, MHA is a big undertaking, you know. Yeah, it's it's also the probably the biggest property that they have going for them right now. Maybe with the exception of Bungo Stray Dogs. Which is big in Japan, at least. Um, speaking of Bungo Stray Dogs, um, you have Studio D, which is read, led by Mario Suzuki. Um, it's mainly known for doing Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood back in the day. Um, and since 2015, it has been working, uh, again, almost exclusively on Bungo Stray Dogs. Um which I won't talk about too much during this retrospective because I know no one else on this podcast but me watches it. I, I don't care about Bungo Stray Dogs. I know it's popular. That's all I know about it. Like, the it, funny it's everywhere thing is in that Japan. <laughs> I feel like if someone, if Natai watched it, he'd probably like it. Uh, I mean, uh, probably. I don't know. And then uh, Studio E, which is their newest studio, it's led by Matako Watanabe. I don't know. I haven't been able to find out. I looked it up beforehand. I don't know if this Watanabe is related to Shinichiro Watanabe of Cowboy Bebop fame, um, but is solely known, at least for now, uh, for producing the uh, Erika 7 High High Evolution trilogy and uh, currently producing Metallic Rouge. Yeah, so uh, Studio E has only been around for, I think it was three years, right? Yeah, two, three it's, years. It's very new. But yeah. uh, at least for Studios A through D, like there isn't one studio subset inside of Bones that's like, oh, this is the most prolific, like this is the best studio. Because yeah. every single one of them from A through D, and I'm, I'm sure eventually E, because you know, just because E is new now, it doesn't have too much under its belt. But like Studio A has like Noragami, Carol on Tuesday, Wolf's Rain, Gosick, very popular. Uh, Studio B, Eureka 7, Space Dandy, Mob Cycle, very popular. The <laughs> Studio C quite probably is the most prolific just because it has, you know, MHA, uh, MHA and FMA, Soul Eater, or on High School Host Club. Like, it, that's a very prolific list. Very, very popular. Yeah. Then there's Studio D with, like, Bungo Stray Dogs and FMA Brotherhood. These, yeah. again, every single of these, one of these studios are has pretty something high that they're known for. Yeah, it, it, that's kind of crazy. You know, like yeah. I, I can't believe that one studio has so many production teams that are that have so many A tier anime. You know, the, like the crazy A to thing is, anime. the crazy thing is, we've talked about it on the podcast before. How like an anime seems like it's done by a studio's B team. Yeah, and I don't think Studio Bones has a B team. <laughs> I think they're all A tier. <laughs> yeah, I mean, other than Studio E, currently, just because they only have two works, uh, yeah. but that'll change. Like, I'd like the beginning of Metallic Rouge. Yeah. I have thoughts oh. about the end. I was going to say, <laughs> the next time we do, well, actually, by the time this comes out, the monthly dump will have happened already, but we'll save his thoughts about Metallic Rouge's ending for the monthly dump. <laughs> yeah, but, like, looking through the entire list of all their shows, I'm just like, I, I'm, I didn't know they did that. I didn't know they did that. I can't Your flabbergasted recognize... the, like, quality that they've done over the years. Yeah, it, it seems like, at least for, I've seen most of Studio Bones' shows. Uh, mm-hmm. I haven't seen all of them. But I have seen most of them. Primarily, I've seen a lot of Studio C stuff. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, none of them are really weak, but Studio C kind of has the the biggest hitters, I'd yeah. call them. Um, a lot of this is kind of surprising to me because as of 2023, February of 2023, Studio Bones only has a total of 91 employees. That's, That's crazy. Insane. I wonder if they do a lot of um, cross like teamwork so like sure we have studio a through e but Uh if you have a key animator on one of these teams do they split their time because it's like you only need a key animator for certain parts right you don't need them the entire time on a project it's kind of you know just like in any other type of production do they share them well and then you've also got recently they've been delving into like co-productions as well yeah like how much of that that workload is shared between studios I'm trying to figure out where is um 
Where's Watanabe? Shinichiro Watanabe. Who's he employed by right now? Uh, that is, is he still question. working with Sunrise? I don't. Th- I wouldn't think so because none of his like most recent stuff has come out through Sunrise. It's all been through Studio Bones. Well, it's because like I don't see. It doesn't say that he's working with Bones, like for Bones. It just says yeah. he's just I, like it because it's kind of weird that Shinichiro Watanabe has worked through Studio Bones, but isn't multiple part times. Of, like, Multiple times, like he's direct, and every single one of the things he's directed, I've liked. Um, <laughs> that's one thing that I was noticing throughout this list for like all the Studio Bones original works. Like I like the premises of a lot of them. I like the beginnings and the middles of a lot of them, and then a lot of them I don't like the endings for. Like it is just like it gets muddled towards the end, and I'm like, yeah, they all kind of, mm, kind of like get limp at the end. But you know, it's, just, it's not exclusive to Bones or anything. That's kind of how a lot of original works go. However, I have to correct ones... myself from something I said earlier, though. I said that Shinichiro Watanabe wrote Cowboy Bebop. He did not. Uh, Keiko Nobumoto wrote Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> Shinichiro oh, Watanabe okay. just directed it. I mean, Watanabe is a pretty good director because everything he's directed for Studio Bones, I've liked. <laughs> like, it was uh, great from beginning to end. <laughs> not only did she write Cowboy Bebop, she created Wolf's Reign. Oh. Um... Anyway, continue. I'm sorry. I, I interrupted you. No, I was just curious. I was like, I don't know if uh, Shinichiro Watanabe, he's, yeah, it says he's collaborating with Bones, mm-hmm. but that's it. It's just that he collaborated with Bones. I guess he does have this new project that's coming out eventually um, called Lazarus, which is, I think, going to be a production with Toonami. He has been working with Toonami because he, I believe, yeah. he was working with them to do. They were well, working Space with, Dandy, um, Space Dandy, yes, and Blade Runner, I believe. Oh yeah, I I always forget that he he did that. The yeah. was Blade it, Runner, uh, Blackout, Blackout twenty twenty two, and Black yeah. Lotus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I always forget that he worked on that. Um, God, he was a storyboard artist on Brave the Mighty. What? <laughs> okay. What is Lazarus? I, what is this? I, it's I know what Laz- I know the story of Lazarus. I understand what you know the biblical story is. of Lazarus. Yeah, I know the biblical story of Lazarus because I've seen a lot of like zombie horror movies that have the Lazarus virus. Um. Oh, apparently this is being done by Mappa. Uh, R.I.P. to all of those animators. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh. I don't know. Uh, it, apparently, it's going to premiere in the United States on Adult Swim's Tsunami programming block, but it's not being done by Bones. Yeah. So anyway, it's kind of it's kind of hard to see like Studio Bones as a a defining studio, in my opinion, because mm-hmm. we have we, we kind of have giants in the uh, animation sphere where it's like you hear this animation studio, you instantly go like real shit, like. <laughs> Trigger? Yeah. Real shit? Like, we were watching Trigger. Tr- Annie? Mm-hmm. Real shit? We, oh, we were watching Kill Annie? Yeah. But Bones, I hear, and I'm just like, oh, Studio Bones. Because, again, I no one really, at least for me, and, you know, and I, I consider myself a pretty big anime fan. <laughs> maybe I'm just not a Studio Bones fan. And, then, you know, maybe, maybe I'm the only weird one out here who, who never recognizes anything Studio Bones does. Um, And also, really, one weird fact I did find about, about, find out about while researching studio bones for this is apparently for whatever reason studio bones has a straight up like photography department that it just sources out to people i don't know why i i I don't know again i I, everyone has a side hustle i guess (laughs) you know I, i i can't say that studio bones is well known for anything other than like I, I can't say they're well known for anything, honestly. Like they're famous for MHA now because you know they're primarily the MHA studio. Yeah, back in uh, the day, but, maybe Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, but it's like other than those two big hit Shonen shows, they don't. You know, because you know we talked about Kyoani. They have beautiful background. They have beautiful art style. We you can mm-hmm. recognize Kyoani, and you can go like, oh yeah, that is a hallmark of quality. If Kyoani's gonna touch it, we at least know it's gonna look very pretty. The backgrounds mm-hmm. are gonna look freaking phenomenal. But with Studio Bones, it's like if I hear an anime, an anime project is being done by Studio Bones, I don't go, oh, yeah, that's going to be amazing. Because it's like, well, 
it's not like any of their shows are terrible. There are some terrible shows, sure, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> in their list that I don't like. We'll get to very that. much. I mean, I mean, I'm gonna get to it right now. Um, oh, okay, they don't go have... for it. Well, so they did Chica, the Coffin Princess. That's a show that I didn't like very much. That's um, ooh, that's rough. Yeah, it was a weird show. I didn't like it very much. Uh, I don't know if it's an actually an anime original or not. Nope, twelve volumes. It's a light novel series. Okay. Um, okay. yeah, I didn't like Chika very much. Uh, the animation quality is fine. It doesn't look bad, but I just didn't like the story too much. So maybe that's a problem with the actual story. The only good thing about it is the character design of the main girl. That's that's literally it. That's the only uh, good but, thing. But you know, I did not like Concrete Revolucio. I that's <laughs> that's an original work. It's an anime original. It's kind of garbo in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> should, should we kind of go? Should we kind of go down the list a little bit and talk about their anime originals that they've done? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, they they I mean, started it's... off with it. He will War Chronicles, which yeah. I, I've, I've never, never seen, seen it. I, I've never heard of this. If you if you have seen it and you're watching, let us know down below if this is actually worth watching. But um, then they had what was it Razafon? Uh, yeah, the Razafon and the Cowboy Bebop movie were kind of developed side by side. Yeah, so there's Rossifon, uh there's Wolf's Reign. I remember watching Wolf's Reign on Toonami, so hmm. it's like yeah, I just want to say that he right. will he will War Chronicles has a six point eight on Mal. So I don't know if it's necessarily worth watching. I mean, I I don't trust Mal's rating systems anyway. According to them, like certain shows are trash and other shows are, are top tier god tier, and it's like it's not really true, but okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, what was some? Uh, I mean, Rossifon. You had Wolf's Reign. Wolf's Reign is kind of an interesting one, I think. I liked it way back in I, the day. I remember liking it when I watched it on Toonami. Yeah, I don't think it That's ends also... that amazing though. But my wife disagrees, and she stares oh. at me like <laughs> staring daggers. You know, just probably right I'm now wrong. she's doing it. Uh, uh, Mars Daybreak. I've never heard of that one. I don't think I've seen that one. I never have either. Um, again, it's really bad retrospective starting out with stuff we haven't seen. <laughs> well, at least for their original work, you know. Yeah. I've seen stuff that they they have based on manga. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Erica 7, that, that's a red original work I think both of us have seen, though. I have. I love Erica 7. I hate I... Erica 7 8. Owl, but I love original Eureka 7. <laughs> yeah, the the original series, which aired from, what, 05 to 06, that also had 51 episodes. It aired for an entire straight year. Um, I I really, really enjoyed Eureka 7 uh, back in the day. I, I, I want to say I originally watched that on TV. Like, was it? I think it was on Toonami at one point. I'm pretty sure it was on Toonami. I'm pretty sure that's where I watched it. I'm, I think that's how I originally watched it, because I know that I originally watched it dubbed. The dub is... Eh, it's all right. It's good for what it is. Um, yep, it was on Toonami. Okay, that then that's got to be where I watched it. Um, it's licensed by Crunchyroll right now. Is it? Yep. I say if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend go watch it on Crunchyroll. Um, but no, that's that's one of their original works. I, I remember liking back in the day. That that is something because I haven't really watched it since like the mid two thousands. I think mm-hmm. I should probably pick it back up and watch it again and see how it holds up for me. I I rewatched it um not recently recently like maybe 6 or 7 years ago. Mhm. Uh I still liked it quite a lot. Like if, banger music um Oh my god, who's the band? Who's the band who does it? It's the the, the people who flow the band is Flo. Oh, Flo, yes. I was like the people oh, who man. make go. Mid 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 2000s Flow was everywhere, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's just like uh, Asian Kung Fu Generation, mid-2000s was everywhere. Uh, Aqua Times, mid-2000s everywhere. Overworld, yeah. mid-2000s everywhere. I, I I recognize all the big hitters from the major shonens. But yeah, yeah. Eureka 7, I think I personally think it still holds up. Like I love the original story. I hate the sequel. The sequel Ayo. does not exist. Ayo. 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 And my problem with Ayo, like, it's, again, another anime original, because obviously Eureka 7 is an anime original. Uh, it's that it it just destroys everything that happens in the ending of Eureka Seven. It's just like retcons mm. all of it, and it's like, don't do that. Don't don't <laughs> pull a a Chrono Cross to my Chrono Trigger. You know, um, 
like Chrono Trigger is an amazing game. Then you play Chrono Cross and it's like, yeah, basically everything you did in Chrono uh, Trigger doesn't matter. <laughs> like, oh, well, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, who loves playing a part two where it basically goes, yeah, what you did in part one didn't matter. Like, thanks. Now do all this other stuff. And maybe thanks, that won't man. matter either. Just like, you know, just like Code Geass. Like, I, we didn't need more. We really no. didn't. What do you mean we didn't need more? There's only two seasons, man. Yeah. It's anyway, only two seasons um, of Code Geass. I'm not sure if you've ever seen Ghost Slayer's Ayashi. I have not. Have you? I have. Is it any good? Eh. <laughs> eh. Okay. <It's> all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I. It's a mid 2000s anime about, like, the supernatural. There, there's kind of a. I don't want to say it's an over yeah it's kind of an oversaturated market um mm. it's like what you know it's not very actiony it's more drama and eh, it's okay but uh i have seen darker than black i yeah, love me, me too black. uh the first season that one was really good i like the that second season's kind of like eh. yeah i the second season you know like i said it was studio bones with their original works it, i think a lot of their original works uh they start off really good and then they shit the bed within the last few episodes. Yeah, kind of. It's got the uh, what I call the darling and the Frank syndrome. It went on for far too long. <laughs> right. Yeah, so with Darker Than Black, like, I, it did not need a season two. It, it added a new character. It started expanding more about the new character. And, like, she had no, like, bearing in season one. I didn't understand why she was introduced and why she's now the main character uh because it's like it had you you follow one main guy right that uh, was his name hero he he hey. whatever his name hey hey yeah <laughs> hey listen hey hey yeah you you follow hey in season one it's just like it's a story about him and then you're learning more about the world the world building you're like oh this is kind of cool and then you, you get to season two and it's like here's this new care main character by the way care about them <laughs> yeah and it's like what 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 happened to Hay? And it's like, oh, well, he's off doing stuff in the side, and we're going to do a different perspective now. And it's like, I don't like this. It's you almost spent... like the second season is a, a spinoff. I I mean, I, again, it's hard to say. It's an original work. And, you know, because it's an original work, there is nothing they're really working off. So to me, it just, you know, like a lot of the Studio Bones original works in general, it just seems muddied, you know? Yeah. Other it's than like... Eureka 7. I think the first one well, is yeah. great. But... <laughs> um. It's it's like uh, how a lot of anime where you see this a lot in anime where whether they're original works or not, you feel like it needs like two or three more episodes. And it's like because the ending feels rushed. Right. Darker than black is not that at all. It's the exact opposite. They made too much. <laughs> yeah. It's just like they made an extra whole season. <laughs> it's got the darling and the Frank syndrome. <laughs> I think the first season was 25 episodes. I think the second season was only like 12 episodes or something. Let me look. Something like that. Uh, Dark and the... Yeah, it was only 12 episodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, like I, again, I, I didn't understand it, but I was like, whatever, I guess it's fine. Um, And then they didn't work on anything uh, anime original for a while. Other than uh, until Tokyo oh. Magnitude 8.0. Is that an anime original? Oh, it is. Yes, it's and it's also a Kinema co-production Citrus. with uh, Kinema Citrus, yeah. I don't believe I've seen this one. I saw Tokyo Magnitude 8.0 a long time ago. I want to say back in like 2010, 2011, and I haven't gone back to it since. I'd struggle to tell you anything about this anime. I mean, I mean I'm assuming like the it's title about says, in, uh, <laughs> it's it's an earthquake. It's about earthquake, an earthquake. Yeah, magnitude eight earthquake in Tokyo, which is that's a very scary thing and a very real possible yeah. thing to happen. Yeah. Uh, and then and then Dark and Black season two, which is just whatever. Uh, and then Hero Man. Uh, I I've never seen that one. I have. It's terrible. It's a collaboration <laughs> with Stan Lee, and it's awful. That's that's a shame. Uh, I have seen Star Driver. Have you seen Star Driver? I have not, but I've so, heard you talk about it before. I told you you'd like it because the main character is voiced by one of your absolute favorites, Mamoru Miyano. Oh yeah, it's I believe I'm you know don't quote me on this or do I don't actually care quote me if you want, but I'm pretty sure this is one of his very first main character roles. Hmm. Because at the time, like you know, circa late 
2008, 2009. This uh, this was in 2010, so the mid 2000s <laughs> to mm-hmm. 2010s. Uh, Mamoru Miyano was more of a supporting character, not a main character. And mm-hmm. I, this is the first role I noticed him in as a main character. Like he's quite literally the main character in the show. Because prior to this, all I knew him as was uh, just supporting roles, supporting roles. Uh, I'd have to look through the entire list, which I don't want to get to right now because it's not about Mamoru Miyano. We should do re- respectives on VAs, VA res- I mean, uh, retrospectives. I am looking at <laughs> Mamoru Miyano's filmography right now. Yeah. <laughs> I got that shit on speed dial. I mean, he was Tamaki in Oran High School Host Club, man. But no I... one watches that subbed. <laughs> yeah, like I've never seen the sub, so I don't know. <laughs> And is that a main character? Because the main character is Haru, isn't it? It's the secondary main character. Haru, he is. The, it's a I harem, guess, main bro. They're character. not main. They're they're supporting. The main character is the harem protagonist. Don't lie just, to me. Just just listen to him when they break the fourth wall and tell you about it. <laughs> but uh, I liked Star Driver's premise. There's mechas. Uh, hmm. It's about pretty boys. They're called pretty pretty boys. Where they there's select people in this high school who, for whatever reason, can summon the power of mechs, and they're they're the star drivers. <laughs> it's it's a weird show. It's really weird. Uh, the opening song is Gravity Zero by Aqua Times, and it's amazing, by the way. Uh, other than that, though, like I, it ends weird. It's it's an original work, so it kind of just ends, and there is no continuation. <laughs> Uh, this is one of the rare instances where I'm like, Studio Bones, I would like a continuation. <laughs> you left it off pretty ambiguous <laughs> with, like, the whole, well, here's the main character guy, he's the red dude, and here's another main character guy, he's the blue dude, and they're kind of like, you know, rivals in a sense, but they're Red kind versus of fighting... blue! <laughs> yeah, red versus blue, and they're kind of fighting for this one girl who's kind of a shrine maiden, and it's like, well, she's chosen her champion, and I'm like, mm, I'm, I'm kind of interested in this. Hmm. But, uh... They have like they have full on transformation scenes in it. It's funny. It's it's magical boys. It's 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 Maho Shonen. Maho Shonen. It honestly with mechs. With mechs. Just, I'm, I'm I shit you not. They have magical transformation scenes. Do you do you do you know what my my Maho Shoujo needs? It needs penises and mechs. Stat. <laughs> oh, I didn't think Star Driver was terrible. Um, maybe one that's of these days a... I might check it out. That's also Studio C worked on that, which is like the premier studio. Yeah. And then they, oh god, and then Eureka Seven AO. Uh, I don't want to talk about that. Okay, let's not. <laughs> let's not. Let's also not talk about uh, Ten Kai Nights because I watched that and it was awful. I don't know what Ten Kai Nights is, but first run in the U.S. on Cartoon Network was this made for Cartoon Network? I don't know if it was made for it, but I do believe it was first shown on Cartoon Network. It's based on a toy line by Spin Master. That's all you need to know. It's based on toys. I just remember watching like the first few episodes of this back on Cartoon Network back in the day, and it was awful. Also, the dub for it is horrendously bad. (laughs) Well, that's a shame. Uh, but I would love to talk about the next original work they did, Space Dandy, because that's amazing. Wait, no, I got to finish this. The series first aired in the U.S. This was made for U.S. TV to sell toys in, in America. Tenkai Nights was made for just selling. This is basically Hasbro's anime. <laughs> this is what Hasbro would do if they actually cared about anime. Yeah. Can we talk about Space Dandy now, though? Okay, let's talk about Space Dandy. Let's, like, let's talk about how great Space Dandy is. It, do you know why Space Dandy was so good, though? Because uh, well, it was directed by Shinichiro Watanabe. Shinichiro Watanabe. <laughs> <laughs> One I of the rare uh, original works by Bones where it's like, this is just peak. I love Space Dandy. I love the fact that it's essentially Shinichiro Watanabe's attempt to make like a straight up sci-fi comedy, and he commits to the idea so damn well. It, dude, he kills it. And this was made for the U.S. It yeah, premiered on Toonami. On, on Toonami, yeah. Both the first and second season aired in the U.S. first. <laughs> Weird, right? And and it was dubbed in English before it was dubbed in Japanese. The mouth flaps match the English lines, not the Japanese lines. 
That's so insane. Like this is an anime, but it's a it's an American anime. <laughs> yes. It's it's weird to hear that, you know? It, it's, it is. Yeah, it's, it's, 90% of the time the opposite and you know it's 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 like it, definitely the market is the western audience particularly the american audience obviously oh by yeah how like, it was uh, originally made yeah we've talked about this in like it was a, like, a while ago but space dandy is one of the anime that uh like similar to trigun where it's like it's not anime like it does yeah. not feel it does it has certain it anime is anime but it doesn't it. feel like anime yeah it, it's anime that anyone can really get into without knowing most of anime bullshit like you don't have to understand japanese culture to understand space dandy because no. it's not even in there it's it's a space comedy bro yeah <laughs> it's space balls it's space balls the anime <laughs> it's i mean i wouldn't go that far but um God, what yeah, if Mel Brooks I, made an anime? That would be fantastic. Please, please keep your Western people away from my anime. <laughs> or Monty Python. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Uh, Captain Earth, have you seen that she one? She has a wife, you know? <laughs> I hate this. I hate this timeline. <laughs> anyway, uh, Captain Earth, have you seen that one? Because I've I've never heard of it. No. Okay. No. Uh, but the next we're... original work is Concrete Revolution, John. Uh, I I don't know what they were trying to do with Concrete Revolution. It didn't make any sense, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. It's very nonsensical. It's like it's a superhero anime. I watched like the first two episodes of that, and I was like, "Nah, fam, this is I'm fine. I'm fine." I believe this came out when Double Decker came out too in the same season. I think. And now I'm just like, "Wow, there's two terrible shows about superheroes <laughs> um, i think it's one of those ones at the time like because this came out in 2015 and i feel like it was an anime that came out to kind of capitalize on how popular marvel had become that might be the case because there were a lot of like superhero based things coming out but you know after making kekai sensen then they made this i'm like what what but Kekai Sensen is based on a manga, so yeah, it's not know, an original source. Work. But still, it's like it's disappointing to hear. Like if I heard, "Oh my god, they made Kekai Sensen," and then I watched Concrete Revolution, I'd be so disappointed. <laughs> I'd yeah. be majorly disappointed. Oh, thank um, God I didn't know that they made that. <laughs> yeah, um, I've never watched Dragon Pilot. That's another one of their original works. I have, however, seen Carolyn Tuesday, another great anime work from Shinichiro Watanabe in Studio Bones. Now, I know you've never seen it. No, I have not seen Carolyn Tuesday. So, the best way I can describe Carolyn Tuesday for anyone who's never seen it, um, it's sort of it's sort of sci-fi, but the sci-fi element to it is kind of very background. It's not important to the story. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you and Sho did a spoiler cast on it, right? We did, long time ago. back I think back in 2019, pre-COVID. Oh, my God. Um, but um, it's a, like almost a love letter to songwriters is what the the anime really is. Uh, okay. Because it's like – because obviously Shinichiro Watanabe really likes Western culture, and he really likes Western music a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you couldn't tell with like Bebop and like the Blade yeah. Runner, <laughs> well, and Dandy, Space, Space Dandy, Dandy has a lot of American Dandy, like yeah. inspired music in it. Um, and that's kind of like his is love Shinichiro to... Watanabe a Westaboo? Mm. Uh, but yeah, it, it's really good. The, it kind of goes into like the um, the the creative pitfalls of being in the entertainment industry. How sometimes you have to sacrifice your creativity for getting popular. Ooh, yeah, that's that's definitely a thing creators uh, go through. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's also kind of got this weird. The whole thing is set on Mars for no particular reason. <laughs> that's kind of odd. Okay, <laughs> um, it's like in the far future and it's set on Mars, and I, I don't know why. Um, there's also like lots of social issues that come up in the anime, like. And they're they're handled very well. <laughs> I mean, I'd watch it, but I believe it's on Netflix. It is. Uh, mm. Last I checked, it was originally it originally aired on Netflix as like a exclusive, and as far as I know, it's still there. Oh, it's in Netflix jail mm. for being a naughty, um, naughty anime. Also, the um, the 
if I remember right, all the songs in it that they sing are in English, even in the Japanese dub. Oh, I wonder if Carol on Tuesday was also made for English. I kind of like how Metallic know. Rouge is like made for English. Yeah. Um, actually, I could believe that Metallic Rouge would do something that Shinichiro Watanabe would make. Um, no, it's the other but, Watanabe that worked on it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It is the other Watanabe, which makes me think, hmm. Uh, um, but I, did that, I would, John, you, I think you would enjoy Carol and Tuesday. The, the, the first like four or five episodes are really slow, but it picks up really quick after that. I mean, I enjoyed basically everything Shinichiro Watanabe has worked on. I've enjoyed, so I, I don't I think doubt you it. would enjoy it. Um, I think you would so enjoy it. I looked up who wrote, or rather, I looked up that um, Dragon Pilot. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It's apparently written by Mario Kata. Really? Yep. That because I hovered over it. It's like Mario Kata. I'm like, no way. It's not the same Mario Kata, right? It not, is the same Mario Kata. You're right. It is. Wow. And I'm I... like, oh. So it, it can't be terrible. <laughs> maybe I maybe I should check this out. I didn't know it was written by her. Huh. Fun. Fun to know. Uh, so, uh, aside from Metallic Rouge, uh, which is currently airing, and I think we should probably save that for another episode. Yeah, um, I, you know, I, I I will talk more about it in a in a different episode. But there's also I State say, Infinity. I should say it's currently airing as of the time of recording this. It will have finished airing by the time this comes out. <laughs> not to date our episodes or anything. It's not like we have a backlog. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, I have never seen Skate the Infinity. I know that when it first came out, um, I think Show really liked it. <laughs> That's all I know bait about show? it. Is that what it I, is? I, I, think, I think the characters are very Yowie Bait-ish. Um, and then Godzilla's Singular Point, which I guess you could call it an original work, but it does. it's part of the Godzilla franchise. I don't know if really I would consider that an original work. I also never saw Godzilla Singular Point, so I don't know if it's Yeah, I, I've never seen that one. I didn't even know that existed. I was like, there was uh, one Godzilla anime that I remember, and it was that Netflix one. Yeah, that's not that great. <laughs> no, it was like the CG one. It was um, made by the same people who did Knights of Sidonia worked on that one. The same, I believe it's the same animation studio, the 3D CG studio. I think, I think you're right. Um, no, Godzilla Singular Point, though, was a co-production with Studio Orange, and the Godzilla Singular Point is partially CG. Like, I think all the CG was done by Studio Orange. Hmm, that makes sense. Which makes sense. That's what they specialize in. Um, yeah, it's kind of that's a it. shame that uh, for Studio Bones, they've kind of been... They're the MHA studio now. <laughs> yeah. They are forever the MHA studio now. I think, yeah. It, for a long time, they were the FMA studio, and now they've just become the MHA studio. They traded one three-letter acronym for another. Though they have a upcoming work, the magical girl and the evil lieutenant used to be arch enemies. Like, I I can't. Do you read, read this? I don't, but I I looked at it. I'm like, you have piqued my interest. I, it's a shoujo I mean, manga, you say? I, the Maho shoujo. I, I'm here for this. I mean, um, but yeah, you're right. That Studio Bones, I think. <clears throat> For now, at least, until they come up with something else that they do for a long, long time, are probably going to be known primarily as the MHA studio, unless they pull a wit and just pass that off to somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't know why they wouldn't, they why they would ever do that because it's, it seems to be a big cash cow for them. Like, despite what you and I might think of MHA, a lot of people like it, both in the West and in Japan. I mean. It's shown in, of course, people are gonna like it, but I, you know, it's just like I can't. I like doubt. its release style. I I like that the anime, the action scenes are cool, you know. But the music like, is great. The music's great, which is you know good for Shonen. I just don't like the actual story. The the, the character designs are good for source filmmaker, if you know what I mean. <laughs> We're not getting into that. They're in <laughs> freaking high school, bro. Calm down, FBI. Calm down. Not all the characters are. <laughs> no, but the ones you like are. <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> Try to think Exposed. of all the characters. No, no, not all the characters, but most of them. <laughs> God, I don't. I don't want to get into the whole Twitter thing about that. It's okay. I Frog girl, what that so tongue do? I, I, I hate everything about this timeline. 
anyway, um, yeah. Let's we'll talk about their bones. adaptations. Let's actually talk about their adaptations, though, since we've talked about their original works. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, they've done amazing jobs adapting a lot of their works, like Mob Psycho, amazing adaptation. Yeah. Which, uh, cough, cough, we've done a spoiler cast for all three seasons. You should go check that out. Uh, I think that the adaptation for... <laughs> Don't hate me for this, but the adaptation for Soul Eater was pretty good. It's a shame that Soul Eater is just written so poorly. <laughs> yeah. Yo, funny. So since we brought up Soul Eater, I do want to talk about that. I, I vividly remember when it first came out, it was being marketed heavily as like the Naruto killer because everyone thought this was going to be what people were going to go to outside of Naruto. Because, like, if you think about it, the setup's kind of similar, and it the art style is also kind of similar to Naruto. So I understand why they thought they, would gonna, they were going to get that, that demographic, right? Right. But for the first few episodes, they had huge ratings in Japan, and then it just has this, like, cliff that it falls off of, like, 15 <laughs> episodes in, like, in, in terms of viewership. And... This was, like, going to be a long-running series, right? And then no one's watching it. And Studio Bones is losing money hand over fist trying to, like, throw money at bad money. And, like, they're, they're trying everything they can to get people to watch it. Nobody's watching it. This Soul Eater nearly bankrupted Studio Bones. Like, that's how bad it was. Yeah. It's, and if you look at the last ten episodes, you can tell that the animators themselves have completely given up. It's because it's yeah because it's a bad story, dude. How do you adapt a bad story? I think that the premise was great. I, I like the start of it. Uh, I think that after reading the Soul Eater manga, I was like, oh, it wasn't just the anime that was bad. It wasn't. It wasn't Studio Bones' fault. Like yeah. I, I understand what happened. Happened. The funny thing is, the writer of Soul Eater, the mangaka, um, Ashi Okubo. Is that that's, that's the dude's name, I think. Um, yep. Great at writing beginnings. Phenomenal at writing beginnings to his stories. Sucks at writing endings. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Like, <laughs> all of Okubo's manga, at least that I have read, have, like, phenomenal first ten chapters. Can I also mention that, you know... Here's Soul Eater Season 1 that almost bankrupted Studio Bones. They also did the spinoff, Soul Eater Not. Soul Eater they Not. Did. And it's like, <laughs> how many times are we going to teach you this lesson, old man? <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy that they'd be like, you know what? You, this series almost killed us. However, <laughs> let's, we'll adapt it, I guess. <laughs> it's like, why? Why would you do and that? So you know, as bad as the end, because like, there's a lot to like about the original Soul Eater anime, especially in the beginning. There's nothing to like about Soul Eater Not. It is just the most shameless Yuri bait cash grab you've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. And all of the characters from like the original story are relegated to either background characters or cameo appearances. That's it. Why? <laughs> I, I, I can't. I couldn't tell you, bro. And you know, I know that a lot of people hated um their original FMA. People don't like that. There's a lot of anime original timeline stuff that happens in it. And the entire the ending and, is completely and, anime original. Yeah, in the freaking movie, right? It's they also did the movie. The yes, was Conqueror of Shambhala or whatever. Yeah, Shambhala, Conqueror of Shambhala. So. I understand that they're like Studio Bones. They made an anime were... movie with Hitler in it. <laughs> they, well, they made <laughs> they made Ed a Nazi. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't Germany. I swear. That dude has Germany. a funny mustache. And you know but... he's just sitting there in the background. He's going like, nope, nope. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> But yeah, uh, say what you will about the original FMA with like the horrible movie ending because you know I didn't like it. I liked Brotherhood yeah. a lot more. However, I think that the FMA, the original FMA, just like it might be nostalgia. I I have no idea. I haven't rewatched the original FMA in a while, but I do know that I love the music 
I, I, I loved all the opening songs. I loved the story beats. <laughs> loved the, we uh, really the should do the voice acting. We really should do a spoiler cast for both the original Full Metal Alchemist and Brotherhood at some point. I'm surprised none of us have done that. That's actually we really should insane. because I feel like this is something that's definitely worth going back and looking at to see how well it holds up, especially given how people hold it up. Especially, well, Brotherhood in particular, um, hold it up on this pedestal in the West, at least as like one of the greatest anime ever made. I mean, I think it'd be pretty crap to do a compare and contrast because one is more faithful to the original than the other because the other one, oh, had we should to make do them in a separate, up. separate spoiler cast. Yeah. Like people ranking, like, you know, I think brotherhood is better because it is, you know, it's animated more recently. So it doesn't look terrible. Uh, it has less anime tropes in it. It doesn't have stupid filler, uh, but I'm like it did. But you know, to me, Brotherhood it didn't en- enrapture me like the original FMA did. Yeah. So I was also going to ask you about that, and maybe this is a discussion we can get into more deeply if we ever do a spoiler cast for the original FMA, because that came out in 2003, right? <clears throat> yeah. And at that time, anime was rife with these adaptations of works, whether they were manga or light novels, whatever, that weren't finished. And yeah. you got you would get like a season's worth, maybe two if you were lucky, and the ending would be a go read the source material kind of ending. So I can almost respect what Studio Bones did where it wasn't a go read the source material ending. It's like, well, the source material isn't finished. We don't know how it's going to end, but here's a a prediction of how we think it might end. (laughs) And it's just completely off. (laughs) And it's way off. But (laughs) It's way off. I can can respect them doing that more than a just go read the source material ending or just a straight up like cliffhanger ending. Right. Um, Because anime at the time was rife with shit like that. I know you haven't seen Kekai Sensen. You really should. I know. You know what? F- put put a damn spoiler cast on the the <laughs> calendar, and it'll force me to watch it. Dude, I I love Kekai Sensen season one so much. The soundtrack, the freaking actual, the animation, the art, the story, everything about it is amazing, bro. Um, maybe me. And Natai says Natai... I would love it for the music alone. Maybe me and Natai are overhyping this, though, because, you know, I, I hate people who do that to me. I, like, don't overhype me on shows because then I'm going to be more critical of it. <clears throat> so uh, I'm hope I'm not doing that to you. But like <laughs> Kekai Sensen is like a personal favorite of mine. So mm. I thought the adaptation was great. I don't um, read the manga. I just only watch the so I can't say how faithful of an adaptation it was. I can just tell you the anime was so fucking amazing. <laughs> Yeah. I know. <laughs> I, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> I have a personal goal this year at some point during this year to watch Kekai Sensen. Have you seen Death Parade as well? No. <laughs> okay, that's the other one I told you you need to go fucking watch. Go watch Death Parade. What's the other one? Is it Death Billiards? Is that the other one that's kind of related? That is kind of a prequel. That doesn't matter. Just watch Death Parade. Okay. That's the okay. that's the good one. <laughs> okay. But they I are related. Billiards. They are, yes. Okay. But you don't have to watch uh, that. Just watch Death Parade. It's fine. But speaking of adaptations that got a lot of people in a fervor at the time, Oran High School Host Club. Let's talk about that. Boy, I don't want to talk about Oran High School Host Club. I don't. All right. This might be a hot take. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I don't like Oran High School Host Club that much. I thought it was mediocre at best. Uh, your wife is I, about to attack you in your <laughs> sleep. She's sitting aghast at my opinion here and just mouthing, <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> I I know whatever I know or you know maybe because it's made for like girls maybe it's, that's it's made why? for Fujoshi is what it's made for John. Listen, your incest twins are gross. I hate that. I hate <laughs> that. Why did they push that so hard? Is it ever they explained did, in the manga why they're so incesty? No. no, it's not explained. Okay, it's just there. Yeah, like it's just is there. that hot? Do. I, I guess that guys find do, it hot do, that if twin sisters kiss, so I, why wouldn't it be the same for women, I guess? The twin brothers? I, that maybe? Who knows? I don't know, man. I mean, John, all you gotta do is look at the amount of people in the Oshinoko fandom that want the incest ending. Myself okay. included. <laughs> but hear me out. They're not actually related, though. Like, mentally, they're not. And Okay. You know, <laughs> 
when you find out like who they were in their past lives and it's just like oh man it's it's more complicated than that bro <laughs> no i'm sure not, a it's... family i'm sure a family court will see it the exact same way <laughs> listen as long as everyone's a consenting adults then you know there's a lot of new jersey lets you do a lot of stuff so <laughs> hey florida does too I can, you oh, can marry Lord. your cousin down here I think in Washington State you can marry your first cousin, but you're not allowed to have kids. Like oh, here they don't eight. care. You can marry your first oh. cousin and have kids with them. Oh. But yeah, I, Horn High School Host Club was such a like a di- dynamo. Like everyone was talking about it when it was out. Like it's yeah, all it was very women. popular. All, all. I'm tell you something. The amount of women I've talked to over the years that say they got into anime because of Oran High School Host Club is astounding. Yeah, like Studio Bones has done a lot of anime that have gotten a lot of people into anime. You know, MHA, yeah. uh, FMA, this Oran uh, High School I, Host Club, Oran High School Host Club. I'd say Eureka Seven as well because that was another. Basically, any yeah. show that they threw onto Toonami, you know, that yeah. was just like. On Toonami or on Cartoon Network, it's like, yeah, they would, they drew in a lot of people into anime. Yeah. Um, but no, I just, I remember it. It was one of those ones in the, the mid 2000s where even people who didn't like openly talk about loving anime were like, yeah, this one high school, this was pretty good. Kind of like, it had like the horror he effect where so weird. it came out, it came out and like everyone was talking about it. Yeah. I, I feel like if there's, a studio that we can crown the king of gateway anime i'd probably give it to studio bones like yeah sure you can say studio olm because of pokemon or um sunrise for like gundam and um or toei animation for uh, yeah dragon i was gonna ball. say toei for dragon ball but like that's kind of they, they're kind of a one and done you know what i'm saying versus yeah. studio Ooh, bones or... it's like they've they've had they've had soul eater what was MHA. the studio that did naruto um I can't remember off the top of my head now. I that studio, <laughs> whatever studio that did Naruto. <laughs> I, the, the name escapes me right now, but that studio has also done a lot of like gateway style anime. You're gonna look it up well, now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm looking it up because I, I actually don't. Are we talking about Naruto original or ship it in as well? Well, they they worked on both. I'm looking it up. Jamie, I know, pull I know it that. up. Jamie, pull it oh, up. Oh, Piro. Piro, yeah, Studio Piro. Yeah, studio Piro. Because they've worked on some a lot of stuff that I would consider gateway Dang, anime. Established in 1979, they're an old studio. Look up when Studio Shaft was uh, uh, founded, and you'll you'll be shocked. <laughs> oh, they did Black Clover, Tokyo Ghoul. Oh wow, this is a competitor. Yeah, that's definitely um, <laughs> this is a tough competition. Yeah, <laughs> the guys who did Bleach I would... <laughs> versus. Hey, I would say. I would say it's between Studio Piro and, uh, and and Bones. But, yeah, I think Bones is really – they put a lot of anime out there that I think, especially in the, the mid to late 2000s, early 2010s, really helped people get into anime. Um, moving on from Oran High School Host Club. Um, what was another – I mean, we've talked about Soul Eater um, and FMA Brotherhood. Um do you want to talk about this string of uh of, of Gosik and number six and Ungo? Because I really don't. Gosik was all right. I mean, I liked the ending of Gosik. I'm not gonna lie. Like, let's see, the main it was character girl was. Cute. It's been it's been 13 years. Like you know, it, it's about war. You know, it, it's kind of a yeah. sad thing. Um, I I mean, I liked it. <laughs> Not enough to go read the light novel or nothing, but I like the anime, <laughs> and I believe it was also. Didn't Mari Okada help with Gosik? I'm pretty sure she did. Really? I'm learning so much about Mari Okada today. I swear she helped on that. Give I'm me not one... saying anything that has her name on it here. Damn, we did a lot of research before this, didn't we? We're having to look yeah. it up right now. Listen, there's so many to go through, right? Don't... Oh, there are. There is. A... Listen, I'm looking through this this work list of their work. This is a long list. Yeah, she helped produce Gosik. Okay. Helped, uh, with the writing and pr- uh, production of Gosik. Let me see. Let me see the actual. A lot of stuff. They... Let me see what the actual series composition. That's what she helped on on Gosik. Okay. 
Um, I, one thing I definitely do want to talk about, and I think it's something that you and I may have differing opinions on. Um, so in the mid 2010s, 2014 to be exact, um, Bones worked on Noragami. Yes. I really like Noragami. A lot of people really like Noragami. I I watched it because people were so into Noragami, and then I was like, yeah, it was kind of whatever. I haven't seen season two or nothing, so I, I, I can't tell you if it's really good or not. I, I didn't care for it. Um, I did go eventually and go read the manga, though. So, mm. that was more of just well, that was just more of like I, <coughs> I've seen this anime. Let me check out the manga. But I, I mm. I'm still not that impressed by Noragami. I understand that a lot of people, again, a lot of people got into anime because of Noragami, because it's like it's oh look at this cute this the the prince of freaking un poor man with the, the cat like oh yeah like, he just wants to be worshipped man yeah it's like whatever he just wants a shrine all to himself. Anyway. Sad boy hours. It's just sad boy hours. The anime. <laughs> I know that Noragami was very popular. I think that's kind of why it resonated with a lot of people because, like, the main character is so sad. He's so lonely. <laughs> I don't know. I like Noragami, but I know that there's a lot of people that think it's just kind of meh, whatever, or just actively hate it. Um, I loved it. Now, Chaika. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Chaika. Can we just talk like about Chica. the character of Chaiga? Because she's kind of cute. It's because the, the freaking movie eyebrows. Well, get out of here. Yes, thick eyebrows are very sexy. What are you talking about, John? Listen, I honestly thought you were going to say, I love the incest between the sister and the brother. I thought that's what you I were going to say. I mean, that's kind of a perk, but I'm more here for the eyebrows. I just, I don't know. I, I don't think the story of Chaika was too enthralling. Uh, I remember Riker really liked it, but... You know, that that's all I remember about Chaika. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly speaking, <laughs> this one person who used to be on the podcast liked it. That's the only thing I know about this show. I remember it was about like discovering clones or something, and they had like weird jewels in their chests or something. Oh, yeah, it is weird. I'll give you that. It's it's very weird. <clears throat> Do you want to talk about Kekai Sensen, or have we talked about it enough? I've talked about it, Kick Eye Sense enough. Like I again, I've never seen the manga or never read the manga, but I love the anime. Mm. Sounds amazing. The soundtrack's amazing. Animation's amazing. Stories are amazing. Uh, yeah, getting into like the stuff they've done uh far more recently, um, that are adaptations. I mean, obviously we've talked about Mob Cycle One Hundred, MHA, um I would talk about uh Bungo Stray Dogs if more people had actually seen it here on this podcast. Um, I mean, I, it's popular. That's all I know. Like, it's, Japan it is, loves it. It's, well, it's super popular in Japan. I don't think it's anywhere near as popular in the West. It, it's like one of those things with um, with Yudu Camp, right? <clears throat> Yudu Camp in Japan is unbelievably popular. Like, you look at it here in the West, and it's like, yeah, it's got its following, right? But nowhere near what it's got in japan and you talked about this in the in our discord server recently about how like a big part of the reason why something like yoda camp is popular in japan is because like there's a big camping culture in japan yeah because of the um the work culture in japan like it's frowned upon to take you know mm -hmm. a two three week long vacation even though they they give you like two or three so weeks take, of like vacation. weekend trips yeah it, but it's very popular to just take weekend trips so camping is one of the things that you can do over a weekend. You know, you can go set up next to a river or at the beach or do whatever, you know, and just do anything you want next to a mountain. And maybe take a Friday or a Monday off, make it a three-day weekend instead of taking, like, a two-week vacation. Oh, no, they'd never do that. They would just go <laughs> for the day. They do day trips a lot. Like, a lot of things they'll do just over a day. Like, the same thing, it's the same principle for, like, real cons, uh, the like <clears throat> traditional ends where you can go into. A mm. lot of them only let you do, like, one day. Like, it's unheard of to book multiple days because they're like, what? Multiple? Why would you want to be here for multiple <laughs> days? Like, most people would just do an overnight trip. And it's like, yeah, yeah that's because they everyone's so like, oh, I'll have a, a mini vacation. They do a lot of mini vacationing. Mini vacations. <laughs> yeah. So that's why Eurocamp yeah. is a lot more popular just because, like, the whole outdoor aspect. Like, it's it's also just part of, like, Japanese culture. Uh, they do – because, again, they – a lot of them don't travel over their – overseas. Um, mm-hmm. We see it in anime where people will travel overseas, but a lot of the Japanese people themselves don't travel overseas. Well, um, a lot of times when you see that, they're like 
they're doing like gap year kind of stuff. Like it's in between from high school to college. Yeah. Uh, or well, they're I in mean, high school. It's because, you know, from the Western perspective, like a lot of people in in the West, like people in Europe and people in America, especially when we travel, we travel abroad. Like we we, we people from America are going to go across the borders, you know, or we go across the country or we'll go across the country because the United States is a collective wide. of many countries like every you know how different florida is from washington you know the weather the um you know because we're quite literally on the opposite ends of each the map yeah opposite ends east and west and north and south yeah which uh japan does have like you know the difference between being in hokkaido and then being in okinawa right like yeah. hokkaido is you're living in russia and okinawa it's like you're in hawaii <laughs> i do know that uh, a lot of japanese people do vacation in um hawaii and also here in washington for some reason we have and like they go a... to um guam as well because that's part of the united states so it's like they do vac there there are vacationing spots outside of that but uh yeah like international travel isn't very prominent i would say yeah outside so, of like business travel yeah so because of that uh things like camping are very popular and to see an anime about cute girls doing cute things and do being comfy and doing something as comfortable as as like camping because camping is is not for everyone um the way that i camp probably is a lot more different than how other people camp because a lot of my camping is a lot more rough in it <laughs> mm. like not not to the levels of a backpacker because backpacking people are nuts um <laughs> I, I think they're nuts, okay? You have one backpack, and you're going to be out there for seven days, and you have, like, nothing. It's like, oh, my God. You have a you sleeping survive? bag and a prayer. <laughs> I'm serious. There are wild people. I I, I had a uh, my old manager. He did backpacking, and he's just like, mm -hmm. just how do I minimize the weight on my packs? Because it's like he's packing all these things, and he's going to be out there in the woods for, like, a week or two. And I'm like, dude, like that's crazy. <laughs> I don't rough it that bad, but, I, you know, when we go camping, uh, my family and I, we do go for a couple of days. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like we have you – know, there's no running water. There's no electricity. There's no toilets. You know, like, you need to use the toilet. Go dig a hole in the ground <laughs> type of business. <laughs> so, you know, I think a lot of what Japanese camping is is more glamping, in my opinion. Glamour camping. Um, well, it, it's because – I don't know because my definition of glamping is like if you have things like a heat source that you don't have to fucking go get sticks for, <laughs> you know, you have a Bunsen burner, a butane burner, or whatever. Like that, not, to me, that's that's pretty fancy, bro. <laughs> you didn't have to go collect dry sticks and bang rocks together. <laughs> Whoa, that's crazy. What's that? You brought an actual fishing pole instead of just the line and the hook, and you're not gonna go make a, a rod out of the trees. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it's it's different. Um, yeah, but I, I understand why a lot of people would like it because yeah, I think it's pretty relaxing. Like every time I see camping inside of anime, I go, "Man, I kind of want to try that." Like um, <laughs> in one airing this season, uh, "Sign of Affection," they went camping on the by the riverside and they had like a pop up tent and they had like pillows and rugs down and they're like they have an actual cooking stove top and I'm like, that looks so nice. Like I kind of want to do that. Like, I think it might be annoying packing all that stuff into a car and having to set up and take it down, but that seems like a pretty cool idea to do, like, a day trip, you know? Like, if I yeah. was able to travel to... And that's kind of another problem with, um, like, camping out here where I live. To get to good camp spots, like you see in anime, and like, it, um, in Yuru Camp or in, like, A Sign of Affection, I have to travel, like, three, four hours. That's a long time to travel. It's not like Here I can in just Florida take... to get anywhere near a mountain, I'd have to travel like a day and a half. Yeah, so it's like camping is different for a lot of people in a lot of different um, states because it's relative to how close I am. Like I live in a major city, like near a major city, so I'm pretty far away from all the really cool like secluded camp zones, mm -hmm. which is kind of sucky. So it's like it's kind of a lot harder, not kind of, it is a lot harder to do a day trip, you know? It'd be easier if the camp zones were only like an hour or two away, like they are in Japan, where they're able to do it in a day trip. You know, that wouldn't be that bad. But when I have to travel literally double the amount of time, it's a little bit more. It's a hassle. Um, yeah, it's, it's more of a hassle. So I can't really do like the day trip glamping like them. And when you're traveling yeah. that far and that long, you don't want 
you got to bring like so much other crap that it's it's just not worth it to do it like a day trip. Yeah. Like if you're going to go out there, you may as well just be out there for a week. So getting back to Bungo Stray Dogs. Oh yeah, I forgot. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what we were talking about. Man, I'm talking about camping now. Well, you you mentioned what we were talking about, like something like a sign of affection, or you at a camp. You know, what, whether it's camping or whatever, you're watching cute girls do cute things. <coughs> I think part of the the appeal of Bungo Stray Dogs, especially in Japan, is it's very hot guys doing vaguely gay things. That's what I was like. The only thing I know about Bungo Stray Dogs is that it's super popular, and also it's like I'm pretty sure it's a Yaoi bait show. Kinda, kind of. I mean, that's all I know about it. Like a lot of Fujoshi's love Bungo Stray Dogs, so <laughs> there's oh, a lot there's, of. Fans. My wife is pointing to herself. She loves Bungo Stray Dogs. See, get on the bandwagon. <sighs> no. Listen, I will oh. take down Yuri on Ice. I will wow. take it down. Wow. You're on ice is problematic. <laughs> okay, Twitter. <laughs> um, are there any? Because we've been going for quite a while now. Uh, are there any other of their um, uh, adaptations that are left here that you kind of want to get into besides the uh, the ones we've already talked about? I mean, if I could talk about MHA, I, I would, but I can't. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't watch the thing, anime and I don't read the manga anymore. So, one thing I will bring up about MHA is, I mean, it is obviously a shonen. Um, <clears throat> and for a long time, in the anime like sphere, if you had a long running and especially a continuously publishing shonen that you were adapting into an anime, like Naruto, Bleach, One Piece, whatever. There was always this emphasis that you had to have a new episode every single week, and you had to only take breaks when you absolutely had to. And when you caught up, you just did filler. Right. Um, I'm glad that MHA, the anime adaptation of it, kind of went away from that, and we get like 12 to 24 episodes every single year. I mean, That's kind of a release schedule I think Shonen as a whole should actually adopt. I I understand not liking filler, but there are certain filler episodes I like. Um, oh yeah, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that all filler is bad. Be filler gave us one of the funniest episodes in Naruto. I'm just saying. And like, um, guess this is not anime, but in Avatar: The Last Airbender, the original Nickelodeon one, mm. the um, Tales from Bossing Say, I think is the filler episode name. Like it delivers one of the most powerful performances in the entire show, which is yeah. Uncle Iroh saying goodbye to his son, which is a tribute to the original voice actor of Uncle Iroh dying. Mm. And it's Uncle... It's the original guy actually singing uh, Leaves from the Vine. And it's... Bro, it, it's heartbreaking, man. It's freaking heartbreaking. <laughs> but oh, it's also scene. filler. But it's filler! So, you know, it, it's... Yeah, you know, I, I agree that I think a lot of filler isn't effectively used because it's like just okay, we need to pad our episodes, right? Um, but yeah. you can say that about a lot of sh airing shows as well that they have filler. Like for example, beach episodes in mm -hmm. any of your twelve episode animes, those are filler episodes. Yeah, hell, they're filler chapters, bro. They are literally scenes written into the shows and or stories mm -hmm. because someone needed a goddamn break. <laughs> <laughs> like or metallic rouge had a filler episode they had a beach episode they had a swimsuit I, episode i feel i feel like sometimes that happens because they also just want to do something different no i i definitely think that it's you know i i think people if they deserve a break if they want a break they should have a break and i understand that you can't have a break in your schedule because mm -hmm. that kind of just throws it all like loosey-goosey when yeah. you just have a here's an episode that we're gonna skip this week like um for solo leveling, there was a uh, they they there was a, a filler episode. episode. It was a recap episode, seven point five, and a lot of people were very upset by it. And it turns out, like the reason they had to do that was because the main voice actor for the main character caught COVID, so yeah. he couldn't he couldn't use his voice. Couldn't record his lines. Yeah, like God forbid someone gets sick, and you know everyone was <clears throat> freaking losing their mind in the comments. Like I, it's only been seven episodes. I can't believe they already had to use filler. Blah 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 blah. blah. And I'm just like. Okay, first just of all, don't watch is, it that week. Yeah, like people if you so watched every other episode, man. you've seen what they're talking about. Yeah, like just skip the episode this week, man. Like people get sick, people need a break. Like it's fine. 
I think it's not a big deal, but you know, that doesn't mean anything to the the actual industry as a whole because people do think it's just a big deal. People think it's a big deal when there's a break in the weekly episodes. And yeah. as much as these people complain that this was a filler episode or a recap episode, it still shows and there's proof that if if they didn't release it, the retention would go way down, way yes. more down. So yes. it's like, you know, it's kind of a, it has to exist, bro. I know we don't like it. it. I'm not saying um I like filler that much as well, but you know, there are effective uses of it. It can be I done do well. think I do, but it's one of the reasons why I kind of respect the, how they were going about it with the release schedule for MHA. Um, I, I may not actually sit and watch it, <clears throat> but I can I can respect it. Number one, you're giving your audience time to recuperate from the different storylines. You're actually giving them a breather, but you're not away for so long they forget about you. I think that's part of the reason that some of these anime that are getting additional seasons now are kind of falling off. Not necessarily because the animation is worse or the writing is worse or whatever. It's just because you got a three or four year gap in between your seasons. Everyone's forgotten about you. Well, that's not... See, so... I haven't done any actual scientific research on this, so this is just me completely take it with a grain of salt. Ass. Take it with a grain of salt, but I, <laughs> all right. Based on my super scientific research of watching um, the view counters for episode one of hentai episodes and then episode two, three, and four, oh God, <laughs> the retention rate goes down like ninety percent. Not every ninety percent of a view for a series, at least for hentai will be done on the first episode and no one watches the second, third, or fourth. Okay? That's just in general. And I kind of have to apply that same type of logic. I know one exception to that rule. <laughs> I don't I don't care about your exception. I'm applying this type of this this bullshit logic that I have invented to anime where 90% of people are going to watch the first season and then 10% are going to watch the rest. Mm -hmm. The people who actually want to watch the rest. I, I'm pretty sure that's not true. It's probably a lot more different for like porn because you know, for for hentai, it's like you know one and done, right? Like once once you get that post nut clarity, you don't really want to have the tab open. You don't anymore. need to go back again, <laughs> right? <laughs> but um... unless it, unless it's something like I don't know, interspecies reviewers. <laughs> but uh, my point still stands that a lot of people will watch season ones of things, but won't watch season twos and threes, and it doesn't matter if the release schedule is has filler or not i just think that retention rates just go down over time it just does oh yeah there, you're always gonna there's always gonna be some level of fall off but i, I don't know I'd, I'd love to see if there actually have been studies of like retention rates for for things like tv shows or movie series or whatever i'd love to see the different fall off rates for different things and especially uh comparing like release schedules like well, I know that comparing... so one of the reasons why Netflix does the whole uh, drop everything at once binge watching, right? The only mm -hmm. reason they do that was because because <laughs> it was stacked in their favor. They have metrics, right? Uh, I actually yeah. just watched a documentary or a video essay about this, about how Netflix basically took House of Cards and crafted the perfect show. They were like, okay, everyone likes political and thrillers. And Kevin Spacey ruined it. <laughs> Well, before Kevin Spacey was exposed for being a terrible fucking piece of trash, um, it was like everyone likes Kevin Spacey. At the time, everyone liked him, right, when House of Cards first yeah. started. It's like people like this show, House of Cards in Britain, so we're going to make a U.S. version, but we're going to make it more uh, like how we want to based on our metrics of retention rates of people who watch. They yeah. literally crafted House of Cards to be watched like the most. It was yeah. literally perfect. They knew retention rates, like people are, tend to watch more and have higher retention for a series if we drop it in one batch versus weekly. That's yeah. just the metrics. <clears throat> and it's, it's hard to argue when they literally, they have proof. <laughs> they have the numbers to prove that they're and the, right. <laughs> and the thing with, with House of Cards in particular, and I think Netflix has done this a lot, not just with House of Cards, but with other series that they've done that with, is they would release the new season's episodes on a Friday afternoon. Yeah, because it's not, hey, you got Perfect. a weekend thing to do. Yeah. Now you've got and, two whole days for everyone that's going to, they're going to be all for it. They're going to sit and binge all, what, 13 episodes yeah, or however you many have, released. When you have the data, you have the analytics, you have the metrics for all of this, it's easy to tell you, like, it, it does work like that. And, yeah. you know, anime might be a little bit different because, you know, like, 
how people feel about I don't know how people feel about binging anime. Like I there is a there is a weird like kind of solidarity for people watching things week to week. Where it's like we're all waiting for the same stuff to drop next week. Like, oh man, I can't wait for next week's episode. The water cooler it, effect. Yeah, the water cooler effect, where it gives you something to talk about. You know, like with Game of Thrones. Like, I remember, God, I I still have not seen Game of Thrones. Um, or keeping it with anime. Remember when ReZero was first came out in 2016? Like every yeah. week, people were rushing to talk about that show the second it came out. Yeah, and it's like, so there's that like a uh, type of. Because it, it it adds a different layer. It adds there's a social construct or not construct. There's a social. Uh, I don't know what the word I'm. There's a social there incentive to do it because it makes Thank you feel you. like you're part of a, a part of a team or part of a group. Yeah, it, you know, it's like you know, just like sports. You know, did you watch the game last night? Oh man, I can't believe you know. It's it's it, it taps into that whole effect. tribalism thing. Yeah. So because you you know you want to be part of that in group. With Studio Bones releasing uh, MHA like every year, like that's. It's good for the series because I just it's just undying, dude. MHA is undying, I swear. It is yeah. proving to be another like, you know, everyone always people debate uh is there going to be another big 3, right? Cuz we yeah. at one point in time we had the big 3 and they were one piece undisputed. Naruto Bleach. Yeah, one piece Naruto Bleach, undisputed the big 3, the big 3 of shonen. Another and, 3 anime that a lot of people got into anime through. Yeah, like a lot, quite a lot. So it's like, what is the, and we've always been chasing the next big three. And, you know, people are like, oh, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. Like, I feel like MHA has solidified itself as a one very, of the next big three, one of, but I don't think we can compare and contrast that because it's like, there's so much more anime that grabs people's attentions. And then mm -hmm. because of the diversity of like streaming platforms and stuff, like, I think that it's smart of Studio Bones to drop it uh, basically every year. Cause it's like, you know, the hype can never die down if it just comes and out every year. And just the sheer amount of anime that's coming out every season, too. Back when the big three was, like, a really big deal in the mid-2000s, there were not, like, 30 to 40 anime coming out every season. No, it was more like 20 or less. And yeah. a lot of them were crap. And a lot of them were 12 episodes. But with uh, with how MHA is releasing basically 12 episodes a year, uh, every year at least, it's similar mm -hmm. to how, like, American TV works, where we have you know, a season, like Lost, you know, everyone loved watching Lost, and every year we had a new season of Lost. We'd mm -hmm. watch it during a specific time, and it's like, so instead of it being, and it, it's kind of a weird thing to think about, because it's like, you have this uh difference where here's this long-running shonen where it, the, the industry used to be, let's just run 50-something episodes straight over mm -hmm. the course of a year. And to transition from that to, like, doing the American release schedule, like, that's completely different from how it's it's counterintuitive to how Shonen was originally done. But it, it works. It's effective. Yeah. It keeps it in people's minds. And also Studio Bones is, like, amazing. Like, uh, <laughs> the animation, like I said, in MHA is amazing. Yeah. I love watching the fight scenes. <laughs> it's cool. That's, and it's a, it's a, I kind of, I think, I think it's kind of like a perfect storm thing where they put the right people in the right places to make that work. Right. Um... I don't know. I but I I'm like you. I think that <clears throat> for now and into the near future, unless something changes and they pass it off, I feel like Studio Bones is the MHA studio. And that's I mean that's, that's not a bad thing. It's a huge franchise, no. so it makes a lot of money. And it's obviously it must be doing well for them because they're starting their seventh season this year. Yeah. Um, and they've done like two movies now or three movies, I think. I honestly want to crown Studio Bones like the king of gateway anime, though, because, you know, looking through Pero, sure, they have Bleach and Naruto, but that's kind of it. <laughs> yeah. As, like, as One far Piece as is gateway toy? anime go, I, One, One Piece? Piece toy? I don't know what One Piece is. Let me check. Um... <laughs> We do so much research and freaking during the episode. We've had, what, 35 years or whatever to figure this out? <laughs> I don't know who does One Piece. Oh, yep, it's Toei. Okay, I, th I thought it was. I thought it was the same studio that did Dragon Ball. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't think it's an undeserved title, saying that they're like the king of gateway anime. They've done so many over the years, and they continue to do it with MHA. I, I, there's a lot of younger people getting into anime through MHA. Yeah, like, because, again, I am I was scrolling through uh, Piro's list while we were talking earlier, and I'm just like, I see 
like three, maybe four titles only that were like two of them really big, you know, Bleach and Naruto. And then mm-hmm. the other two are like, was Yu Yu Hakusho really that big? Like, I liked Yu Yu Hakusho. It was when it aired, yeah, but I don't think it had the staying power of something like Naruto or Bleach or like something like freaking uh, Dragon Ball, you know? Yeah. Everlasting. Yeah. One Piece, Everlasting. So that's why I'm like, eh, yeah, Piro has done a lot of works, but you know, they they also have been around since like so was it 78, right? Is that what I said? Yeah, it's this is a long time. Uh, it's been around for a long time, so they have quite a lot of shows. The only other like, studio I might say would be in the running and it's for a very different reason is maybe Studio Ghibli. Yeah, Studio Ghibli's different, bro. We can't we That's can't why I say compare it's, it's, Studio Ghibli. It's very very different, which is probably another studio we'll do a retrospective on at some point. Um, but yeah, I think we've been talking about Studio Bones for for long enough. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think this is a good a good place to end it. Um, let us know down below what some of your favorite Studio Bones works are, um, whether they're in the past or things they're working on uh, right now. Um, also, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe if you like what you saw here and wanted to see more. Um, We put out a brand new episode of the Anime Club After Dark Podcast every single Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, And you can also check down below where you can find links to Anime Club After Dark on all the places that we upload stuff. We also have a Discord server down below. Uh, You can join as long as you're 18 plus. We get into all kinds of crazy stuff on there. But the stuff that you guys talk about in the general chat sometimes amazes me. Um and sickens me at the same time. Um, <laughs> uh, we also have a merch store down there where you can uh, buy Anime Club After Dark merch and really help us out. Um, but uh, aside from that, uh, thank you all for joining us um, and have a great night. I have been your host, Alex, and we will see you next time. Say good night, John. Good night. Bye. I got to go look up some MHA porn. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm not editing that in. That's that's (laughs) the content now.